Before I tell you something about the axiom of choice, I want to talk about what an axiom actually is. An axiom is a statement that is taken to be true. It serves as a starting point from which other mathematical statements are logically derived. So if you think of math as building a house, the axioms would be the foundation or base of your house. You can build your house higher and higher by adding theorems and other mathematical statements. But if the base of your house is bad, it could happen that everything breaks down someday. That is the reason why it is important to have good axioms. You don't want your whole mathematical theory to break down just because it is built on an axiom that suddenly makes problems. Therefore, there is a lot of discussion in mathematics whether it is meaningful for an axiom to be called true. The axiom of choice is an axiom that is accepted by most mathematicians, but some do not accept it. This is just a little warning, because people who do not believe in the axiom of choice will not accept any mathematical statements that are built on this axiom. That means such mathematical statements that use the axiom of choice to prove them. So be careful. Let's take a look at the axiom of choice now. Let A be a set of non-empty sets. Then the axiom of choice postulates. There exists a function f with domain A that picks from every set x in A exactly one element. That means there exists a function f so that for all sets x in A, f of x is in the set x. Such a function, capital F, is also called a choice function for A. Let's take a look at an example where we can write down such a choice function explicitly. Let A be the following set of non-empty sets. So A contains the set 0, 1 and the set 1, 2 and 3. The function f that assigns to the first set the number 0 and to the second set the number 1 is a choice function for a. So in this case here you can write down a choice function explicitly and don't need the axiom of choice. So that here is a choice function. The axiom of choice postulates that it doesn't matter how the set A looks like. As long as it only contains non-empty sets, a choice function exists. When do I need the axiom of choice? Here are some examples that do not need the axiom of choice. When you have a finite set of non-empty sets, which could look like that, then it is easy to write down a choice function. Just pick any element from each of the sets. So no need for the axiom of choice. If you want a proof, you can use induction to show the existence of a choice function. For sets of non-empty subsets of the natural numbers, n, it is also easy to give a choice function. The choice function just picks the smallest element of each subset. So you don't need the axiom of choice in that case. For sets of intervals in the real numbers, r, it is also possible to define a choice function. It picks the midpoint of each interval. So the choice function in this case chooses the midpoint of each interval. 
you also don't need the axiom of choice. An example where the axiom of choice is needed is the following. If you consider the set of all non-empty subsets of the real numbers R, a choice function cannot be written down explicitly. You need the axiom of choice that postulates its existence. Now let's take a look at things that follow from the axiom of choice. A very important statement that follows from the axiom of choice is Sohn's lemma. It states, suppose you have a partially ordered set P with the property that every totally ordered subset T in P has an upper bound in P. Then the set P contains at least one maximal element. So Sohn's lemma states, suppose you have a partially ordered set P with the property that every totally ordered subset T in P has an upper bound in P. Then the set P contains at least one maximal element. This is what Sohn's lemma tells you. How to use Sohn's lemma? So first of all you need a partial order which is denoted like that on the set P. A partial order is a relation over P that must satisfy for all A, B, C in P that it is reflexive, which means A is related to A, that it is anti-symmetric, which means if A is related to B and B is related to A, then A is equal to B, and that it is transitive, which means if A is related to B and B is related to C, then A is related to C. So a partial order on the set P is a reflexive, anti-symmetric and transitive relation over P. Now you consider particular subsets T of P that have the property that they are totally ordered. That means you consider such subsets T that satisfy for every x, y in T, x is related to y or y is related to x. Now you have to show for all these particular subsets T that they have an upper bound in P. That means for every totally ordered subset T of P, there exists an upper bound u in p so that t is related to u for every t in the subset t. So for all these totally ordered subsets, subsets t of p you have to show that they have an upper bound in p which means you have to show this here. I want to note that this u here does not need to be an element of the set T. Sohn's lemma now tells you the set P contains at least one maximal element. A maximal element M in the set P is an element for which there are no larger elements in P. So if m was related to x, then it would follow that m is equal to x. So a maximal element m in P is an element for which there are no larger elements in P. Be careful, maximal element does not mean largest element. So the maximal element m in the set P does not need to satisfy 
that x is related to m for all x in the set P. Maximal just means that there are no larger elements than this element m in P with respect to that relation here. Ok, let's take a look at the things now that follow from Sohn's lemma. From Sohn's lemma follow some interesting results. You can show that every vector space has a basis and that linear independent subsets can be extended to a basis. You can show with the use of Sohn's lemma the theorem of Hahn-Banach from functional analysis. It tells you that linear functionals can be extended. You can also show the statement that every ring with one that is not the zero ring has a maximal ideal. You can also show with the help of Sohn's lemma that every field has an algebraic closure. So these are some things that you can show with the help of Sohn's lemma. Ok, I hope you now understand the axiom of choice and in particular Sohn's lemma and I hope you are now able to use it in mathematical proofs. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would help and motivate me to keep creating videos.